What up, guys? We're here in the murky swamps to show off eight new swamp mobs for Minecraft. Yes, that's right. Eight new reasons to go and search out the smelliest biome in-game. No longer home to just witches, these mobs will surely aid you in a multitude of ways. From special cranes that will go fishing for you to get new items, to sneering alligators that you can use to help hide yourself underwater. Even some special transport mobs like the capybara for helping in moving your chickens around. Right. Anyways, let's check out all eight. But before we do, let us know in the comments below which biome we should make more new mobs for it next. So, mob number one. This here's the crane. Hi, Mr. Crane. Hey, camera's this way, man. Anyways, the crane is a new swamp mob. You can summon one in by pressing this button. See, he's right there, he's hanging out. Now, cranes will sometimes fish in the swamp waters that they are spawning within, and when they do that, they will from time to time pull items up from out of the ground. We can actually see this crane over here has fished up a couple different things. Namely, it's fished up a puffer fish, and it's fished up a new type of egg. Although, I don't know if it fished this one, it may have laid it, because it's a crane egg, which you can use to summon in another crane. Wow, who'd have thought? But outside of eggs, you'll see fish from time to time appearing in the water, and that is the work of the crane. You'll literally see them digging their head into the ground and having a chance at grabbing multiple different items. Now, the crane itself has three different drops. One of those drops we've already seen, it's the crane egg. You can use it to get more cranes. But if you kill a crane, you'll also get some special drops as well. The first of which is the beak. This beak is literally from the crane's head. You can actually take the beak and use it with a fishing rod to get yourself a beak on a stick. And you can right click with the beak on a stick to instantly fish because the moment you hit the water, you'll be able to see that by looking at our hot bar, you can notice fish appearing every single time we right click. You got a chance at a loot table every single time you use this beak on a stick. Sometimes you'll get fish, sometimes you'll get books, sometimes you'll get random stuff like bowls, bows, name tags, little bit broken. I'm just holding right click down and we're getting a mess of items, but hey, it's more fun that way. Let's see, we got an infinity book and a power four bow. Now, the other item you get from cranes are crane eyes, which is what I have in my hand. And what you can do with these crane eyes is more easily identify fish all over the place when you hold it. All fish will instantly be highlighted with the eye in hand. All right, mob number two, the snapping turtle. This hostile turtle is slow, but very strong with a nice big old jaw capable of clamping down. I wouldn't recommend you get close. If you do, he'll start to chase you. Open his mouth, give you a little bite. Now from time to time, you'll actually see this snapping turtle laying an egg in the ground. That's this particle effect we're seeing take place right here. Eventually that egg is going to spawn in an additional snapping turtle. So kill this guy as fast as you can before you have to start dealing with a whole mess of these guys all over the place. See, this one just spawned in just like that. Oh yeah, yeah, get away. We got a couple different drops upon killing this thing. Now these eggs aren't technically collectible. They'll eventually be spawned in by the turtle just hanging out. Now you may actually want a couple of these appearing around you in game. That's because creepers hate snapping turtles. Allow me to show you exactly what I mean. Spawning one of these in and they instantly get pushed away. They cannot get too terribly close to the snapping turtle or they will be pushed away no matter what direction it's in. I mean, look, it's literally, <laughs> well, he's pushing the creeper towards me at this point. Yo, I'm good, bro. But you can also get an item known as algae from these new turtles. And you can drop this algae on dirt in order to instantly grow grass. So if we break these grass blocks, you'll be able to see in just a second here that the dirt is no more. Drop, drop, instantaneous replacement. Ooh, beautiful. This is gonna make building a lot less complicated when it comes to grass blocks. The other thing these turtles drop are scoot flakes. You can combine nine scoot flakes to be crafted into a regular old scoot. So, as you can see here, place them all in. You now have the ability to get scoot for other recipes and for brewing. All right, next up, mob number three, the alligator. You'll find these prehistoric lizards roaming in the waters of the swamp. Get too close and you may see them go for a little bit of a bite. 
Now the alligator itself is a hostile mob, but it is way more effective when it's in the water. Right now, it's got moderate movement speed when going about on land. Decent health and can take a pretty decent chunk out of you as well. It also drops three items, meat, teeth, and ridges, but more on them soon. I want to show you this guy when he hits the water because he instantly starts moving way faster, like infinitely faster. And he'll come at you with a smooth force, unlike you've ever seen. And he's a little bit stronger in the water too. Easy does it, man, okay? I want your items. Can we trade? Thank you. Well, you got some health on you, dude. There we go. So, the three items in question. First one is alligator meat, which if you didn't realize, just another type of food that you can eat. But you can also use this alligator tooth to make a new blade. An alligator tooth blade, which makes enough sense. All you need is one alligator tooth and a single stick. Combine them in a crafting table, as you can see here, to make a tooth blade. And the tooth blade will give you strength when in water. Right now, it's currently got plus five attack damage. Doesn't really do anything too special. Step in the water, though, and look. Instant and permanent strength three boost. Beautiful. It's the difference between this alligator taking one, two, three, four, five, six swipes. Mm-hmm. Versus in water. Well, one, two. Yeah, way faster. And, of course, the alligator ridge, which you can use to make a gator helm using five alligator ridges to do so. Placed just like this, you can get a nice new gator helm, which you can actually wear on your head. And it'll give you various water-based effects, on top of the fact that when you jump into water, you become, well, once you start swimming at least, invisible. Wow, scary boy. All you can see is my helmet. And as you can see here, we also have a whole mess of different effects. Water breathing, invisibility, and dolphin's grace. Fishies, watch out. Your days are numbered. Swamp Mob 4, Capybara. These special little rodents like to make friends, namely the chickens, but we'll get to them in just a second. For now, more about this Capybara. If you were to kill one of these creatures, you'd get a special item for it, the Capybara fur. They also, from time to time, will drop in a potion of water breathing. Which, I don't know if you knew this, you can use to breathe underwater. Wow. But you can use capybara fur to attract <laughs> chickens of all things. Yes, chickens love capybara. This is in real life as well. Check it out. Yo, they smell it. What's good? And apparently you can feed f the fur to the chickens and they make little... Oh, boy. Okay, here. You want to grow a little bit bigger for me, buddy? Uh, he's gonna eat all of my fur. Really? He ate all of it! And now he's leaving! Well, look, here's the reality of the situation. Capybaras and chickens, essentially, like, best friends. Kind of hilarious. If they happen to cross a chicken nearby, they will literally wear the chicken. And this is only, really, done in water. So, if you know, you, you know what you're doing, that would probably be part of the reason why you want these chickens around in the first place. They will literally dance amongst one another, trying their best to see what chicken should be collected to be moved across the water. <laughs> it's so funny. Why is this useful? Well, it's not particularly useful. It's just fun to, you know, watch. Mob 5, the anaconda. This mob don't want none unless you got buns, hon. Uh, right. The moment it sees you, it's ready to strike, slowly slithering in your general direction. Be careful. If you get bit by it, you'll take damage and you'll get real hungry. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Easy does it, dude. Now, if you kill it, you'll get a special item. It's known as, y'all's ready for this, snakeskin. We'll talk about snakeskin in a second. For now, though, we want to spawn another one of these snakes and feed it. We just fed it a husk. <laughs> and you can see this snake is slowly beginning to digest the husk inside. No, like, legit. It's got, like, the husk stuck in its belly. It takes approximately one minute for the snake to digest the mob in question before it turns into a double snake. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You can also feed it sheep. Which is kind of hilarious, and then it'll have the sheep stuck inside its belly too. Now this snake over here finished digesting the husk that it was just eating on, and it compressed it down into a diamond. This is a really cool thing, guys. Why? Well, we've just discovered most valuable poop ever. 
We're gonna let this snake finish digesting the sheep over here. We'll tell you a little bit more about the snake skin that we found. Well, you can use a snake skin to craft into a slab for some reason. Check it out. Snake skin slab. Oh yeah. It basically acts as a decorative block that you can use for your houses. Maybe as a seat cover. Maybe as a cool area to show off all your trophies. Oh, I don't know. Man, longest digestion ever. Oh my gosh, you better not get in the water anytime soon. Okay, just finished up and look, diamonds left over. Beautiful. Mob six is the beaver. Beavers are fun little animals. And they've even got more fun little tail. Look at you, paddle alert. Oh, come back. If you kill a beaver, you get some pretty cool items. Die, die. We well, get one at least, the beaver pelt. You can use this beaver pelt as an alternative to leather. That's right, you can use beaver pelts to make your leather gear. Whether it's a leather cap that you want to wear to your favorite baseball game, some leather boots, you got leather leggings, and now you got leather tunic. And so you can use all these things together to make a nice beaver suit. You know, which is whatever. Alternatively, if you've got a beaver nearby, you can use them for other nefarious purposes, such as bringing that beaver near some wood. Because if it goes near some planks, it has the chance at dropping a special new item. Track the beaver with some carrots near some logs, and you will find that that beaver has stripped the bark of the wood, and you are left with a new type of item known as wood chips. But hold on, beaver, get to the other. Yeah, yeah, looking good. We just got a handful of wood chips. Now, what can you do with them? Well, you can use them for different recipes. For one, if we go over to the crafting table, you can see that two wood chips on top of each other gives us a single stick as a new recipe. And if we were to take three wood chips instead, we'd get paper. This guy's gonna help me write my memoir. Excellent. But okay, our next mob is the mosquito. More on this mob. Oh, look at him, adorable. <gasps> Die. The mosquito's a special mob that will buzz about and really just, it's kind of hard to keep track of him on my camera. Where's he at? Yeah, there he is. Dirtiest boy in all the land. Yo, it is so hard to capture footage of this thing. <laughs> Highly recommend taking out the mosquito as soon as possible because it will shoot down in an attempt to attack you if it gets a little too close to you. And it can also hide in the blocks around it. So if you don't take it out real quick, well, you are just asking for problems. Now get, uh, got him. We got two different things. One was my own head. <laughs> Right, more on that in a sec, but we also got a needle. The needle is actually the stinger from the mosquito. Spawning in another, I want you to see the damage this guy is capable of dealing to us. He'll go ahead and charge at us, and then you'll see that the moment he strikes us with his vicious... Where... Where did he... Huh? Where did he go? Oh, oh okay, here it is. Get... Yeah, Ein. See? Did two and a half hearts of damage? Oh my gosh! Yo, vengeance? Big vengeance alert? Yeah, gonna go ahead and get two needles, thank you very much. You can use this needle to heal by attacking other mobs. You see that? We're back at full health. All at the cost of that poor innocent chicken's beaten, brazed, bashed body. When you hit mobs with it, you heal. It probably made more sense to do, you know, do it with a husk, but check this out. No armor on. We're gonna go tit for tat with this husk. Punch him after he punches me. Punch him, punch me. Etc. In fact, I'll let him get me way down on that health spectrum so you can see exactly how effective this needle is at being capable of healing you, like, extremely quickly. Watch, we're pretty much almost dead at this point. And now look, look at that. We're back at full health, essentially instantly. Now the idea with the player head is that if a mosquito gets close to you when you kill it, you can get your own player head. That's because mosquitoes, they draw blood. And so you can use their DNA, or, you know, your DNA from the blood or something, or whatever. This is just an easy way to get your own skull in the game, okay? You work with me. And the final mob, the mud skipper. This mob digs underground and is capable of flopping all over the place on land and in water. And, and, and partially in dirt. Though a little easier to see when you're in survival mode. Get back here, dude. Somewhat afraid of humans, you'll need to track this thing down fairly quickly and take it out if you want the drop associated with this mob. If you don't want it, well then, you can just watch him bounce around and then, you know, that's pretty fun too. Now get! Ah! Get! Yeah! 
And I got two drops for our trouble. First was the mud skipper itself. Look, friends! Oh my gosh. Closer. Now you use the actual mud skipper item as a source of food. You just eat it up and you can heal nice and easy. Now, if you get that second item from the mud skipper, that's where things get a little bit more interesting. Stop! Ah, you the worst! Second item is the mud skipper fin. It allows you to, quote unquote, dig into the ground. And so now we're closer to the ground. <laughs> You're like really close to the ground. You would right click again to resume where you were. Or you can just deselect the fin in question and you'll go back to normal. Right click, back on the ground. Let go, back to normal. Beautiful. You can even hold the fin down and it will allow you to crawl on the ground as though you were some kind of mud skipper. Um, right. I mean, hey, this would be a fun way to play Minecraft. Look at what am I doing? It's kind of hilarious, actually. But not as hilarious as the fact that there is a capybara that is actively following us because he wants some of that mud skipper action as well. Guys, that has been all eight of these new swamp mobs. Let us know in the comments below which of these mobs was your favorite. You can also let us know in the comments below which biome we should add some mobs to next. Other than that, we'll see you later.